let's move on now to the Batman. We're both looking forward to the Batman. This is from Robert. Robert Robert Pattinson said, "When I saw the when I saw it the first time, even from the first shot, it does feel incredibly different tonally to the other movies." Pattinson said to Total Film, and it's so strange and kind of dot dot dot. It's sad and quite touching. It's really really unusual Batman story, and it almost seems harder for me to imagine it being a series afterwards. I mean, they always have that little bit at the end that's like and coming up but other than that it feels strangely personal i think people will be quite shocked at how different it is i love that he kind of has the uh, adam west batman and coming up next next time like you know same yeah. time same bad time same bad channel he, he alludes to that he also said in another interview that he didn't think there was ever, there were any bad batman movies uh, so Props to him for saying that. Whether it means it or not, it doesn't matter. It's good PR. But Andrew, you see this. Here's the question. We talk about Michael Keaton and Batman. Is this movie, because people are like, this movie's going to be huge. I think it's going to be a good movie. Don't get me wrong. But three hours, it doesn't look, it's not family, I know it's Rebby Rally. It's not family friendly. Like, you know, it might not be not family friendly, but if this isn't when you're like, let's go, Timmy, let's go see the Batman movie. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, is this movie going to be a box office smash? I think so. I really now like this is an Andrew Fantasia movie. Make no mistake. Yes. It's super long. The Riddler is the main villain. And it shows Gotham the way I want it to show Gotham. It, like they are, I don't know what Matt Reeves was doing. Was he inceptioning my dreams to find out what I like? But this has everything I like and everything I want. So it's going to be a smash hit with me. It will make $2 billion, even if I'm the only person who sees it. Uh, I, I think that this will, um, I don't know. I can't remember how well the Nolan trilogy did. I think the Dark Knight is still the most profitable one. But I think this will definitely beat the other two and maybe even give the Dark Knight a run for its money in terms of box office. I think it could be the, the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight would have been a huge, a bigger hit if tickets prices were as much as they were and it was in 3D. I think those are two factors. Yeah. This was not. This one is three hours, though, and that does kind of... Oh, there's less... Um, less show times for it to play but but at the same time endgame was three hours long it's the highest grossing movie of all time so and so so are avatar and titanic like they you yeah. the that whole argument of long movies don't make money is just executives being scared that's all it is except if the movie's long and people don't uh like it right that's the difference people have to like it if people like it they will go see it we're in a weird era now with COVID because COVID will still, obviously the no way home numbers for Spider-Man are astronomical and people are going back to the theater to watch that in droves, but it's a weird time for, for movies and a three hour movie. I want to see this movie badly, but do I want to spend three hours in the movie with other people who may or may not be infected with COVID whether or not I'm wearing a mask and they're chimouching on popcorn and like talking like they were in no way home. Like what are they talking about? I hated that experience. <laughs> I look, I love the movie theater, but when I saw Ghostbusters and Spider-Man, I was like, man, I kind of miss watching these at home. I was just like the idiots in the theater were just over the top dumb. Cause look, I have a projector. I watched suicide squad on my projector in the summer. I was like, this is okay. You know, I, I didn't have any moron whipping off their mask, coughing, and you know, to, to call, you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, idiots. So uh, I'm really excited for it. Um, but he kind of says he kind of feels like this is a one off, but also it leaves room for a sequel. What do you, what are your takeaways from that? And uh, when you see the Joker in this movie, will you be happy? Uh, no, <laughs> because when I see the Joker, it's just like seeing a brick wall at this point. They're that common. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think Matt Reeves said he wants to do a trilogy. So yeah. I, I'm really just intrigued by what this is going to be and what the series is going to be. Uh, again, this is totally coming from Andrew's magical land of bias. But one thing they haven't done before is imagine if Riddler is kind of like a Darth Vader kind of character where he's the villain in all three of these movies. And you get others in and out, but he's like the villain. Like, that's something that hasn't been played with before, with the exception of like Magneto. So 
try that maybe. I don't know. I'd be all for it. I just think he's going to I, – I, they just can't seem to figure out how to keep a villain alive in these movies. And no. unfortunately, the only time they did was Heath Ledger and the actor passed away and they couldn't uh, move on I, from it and do what they wanted. So, like, I, I don't know. I'm with you. I think – Keep the villains alive. I remember the first time I ever saw 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton. Uh, I got it on VHS. No one would take me to see it. I saw I got it on VHS and I'm watching it with my parents. And we all we all watched the, the Bad and West Batman, obviously. And I watched the cartoon. And the movie ends and the Joker dies. Spoilers. And my mom says, Joker doesn't die. He gets arrested. He's, he's always like, you can't, you don't kill the Joker. Why would you kill the, that was my mom's biggest takeaway from the movie was she was just pissed off that they killed the, like pissed off. She's like, you don't kill the Joker. The, like these characters don't die. And they kept, I mean, the Riddler didn't die, but he went, you know, he was in a silent, he was pretty much dead. Like they, they, the penguin, the cat woman, I guess, but penguin, oh, they always have to kill them off. And it's like, can you, you know that you're making these movies, and if you say you're making a trilogy like you just said, why not make the Riddler the big bad in all three of them? Or you know what I always loved is the Scream movies. Oh, like 10 years ago, Matthew Lillard came out. Have you seen the new Scream, Andrew? No, because we don't have theaters yeah. yet. Uh, I yeah. want to, though. I'm itching to see it. I'm dying to see it as well. I haven't seen it. I haven't read any spoilers on it. Rob McDonald has seen it. He was in L.A. He got to see it. He said he really liked it. It's his third favorite Scream movie. <laughs> but, like, but... Here's my thing, though. It's it's the first one's great. I, the second screen is my favorite movie, as one of my favorite movies. The third one, though, is lacking. And then you, Matthew Lillard came out like ten years ago, and he said he was supposed to be the bad guy in Scream Three. Oh, wow. I don't know if you know that, but he's no. yeah. He said he was supposed to be a bad guy, and he was orchestrating it all from like prison. And you find out that Stu survived this whole time. And I'm like, that's great. Why not do that with with like the Riddler? Right? Now? I'm not saying the Riddler dies and he's like been alive the whole time, but like. Have the foresight to to be like this is this is our our main guy. So I'm with you. Three hours is a long time.